Tell me how you decided to become Jewish. <sighs> well, um, a burning bush. Was <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, you didn't say singing bush. <laughs> My wife is Jewish, mm -hmm. and her family, they're conservative, and they're, you know, they're fairly devout, you know, they uh, uh, practice, and when I, I knew I wanted to marry my wife, uh, when we were dating, it was, you know, I was, I knew, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I also knew that I needed to know more about what Judaism is, and what it, what, what it's all about. I didn't want to be the goofball goy, you know, husband with the kippah, you know, askew going, Shabbat Shalom, you know, I, you know, I wanted to know a little bit about what I was getting into. And so I took the um, conversion classes uh, at the University of Judaism in, um, in LA, but really it was just to kind of learn. I didn't really think I was going to convert. And then just through the process and kind of just spiritually in my own life, I was kind of um, I read this book called The Jew and the Lotus. Have mm -hmm. you ever read that book? It's no. great, great book. Kind of basically uh, finds some similarities between Judaism and, and Buddhism. Kind of talks about the Jubu phenomenon. Um, but I, it, really, it really got me kind of hooked. It really, I was really interested in that. And, and in it, there was a rabbi from a, a, a place called Mitivta, which is a, the Jewish contemplative school for Jewish contemplative thought. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I found out that it was in L.A. So I took a Jewish meditation class there, and I loved it. I loved it. I just totally got into it. So this kind of confluence of things, you know, kind of were working at the same time, you know. And I was in a new space in my life uh, where I was kind of looking for more. And it just seemed right, you know. Uh, until uh, I learned that I had to get recircumcised, which was quite a surprise. <laughs> Uh, I found myself in the valley in a Moyle's house in his bathroom with my penis on his counter getting pricked with a pin and saying the Shekianu. That was a little weird. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and for those at home, it hurts. It does hurt. So guys, think twice. The Jews don't want you. You know, if you want in, you got to <laughs> want it. They're not just going to let anybody in. You have to let your penis get pricked. Uh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> that I, it, it, the funny thing about that story actually is while he was um, doing it, he said to me, what do you do for a living? <laughs> and I said, I'm an actor. And I never say that because whenever you say you're an actor, everybody wants to know what your resume is. It's, you know, you just don't, I, anyway, for some reason I said actor and he said, oh, you should bring your headshot. My son is directing a movie and you'd be great. Now my pants are around my ankles here while he's talking to me. Your son is, my son is directing a movie, you'd be great for it. I'm like, geez, dude, only in L.A., only in L.A., you know, is there like a, uh, and, and so, uh, but then he told me the name of the movie and I realized, oh my God, the, I want, I knew about the movie and I actually, I had auditioned for it and I had screwed up the audition. And the following week, I got a call back. Wow. So Were I, was you... in, I was in the Jewish Mafia immediately. Were you in the movie? No. Oh. I screwed up again. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, so then I did the mikvah, you mm -hmm. know, which was great. Loved it, you know, great experience with three uh, three rabbis mm -hmm. watching me, you know. And at that time, I had my nipple pierced from my crazier days. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the rabbis kind of looking at that and going, "What is up with you, dude? Should we st should we let this guy in?" But they did. It was great. I really loved it. My sponsoring rabbi was just awesome. And what did your family think of it, your parents? Oh, uh, they were fine. My, my mom is a, an activist. That's why I'm in town. I'm promoting this thing that I'm, it's her 20th wedding anniversary and with her second husband. And instead of having a party, they want to have a, 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 a like a, uh, they want to get, you know, raise funds for their peace group. Mm -hmm. So I'm performing. I have to perform tomorrow from three to five at my mom's peace group thing. Uh, but she's so open-minded and, you know. She was just, if you're happy, I'm happy. And my dad likes Jennifer so much, he thought the reason I was doing it was for Jennifer, which is partly true, but not entirely, you know. Um, he just, he, you know, he's just like, he just loved Jennifer, so he didn't care. That's sweet. Yeah, it is, yeah. What's it like being a, a guy from Kansas City in Hollywood? Uh... 
You know, I, I think that I'm pretty grounded <laughs> compared to a lot of people I hang out with in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I came from the Midwest and that I, I didn't come from money and, you know... Uh, you know, the, I'm not really interested in the glamour side of it. I, in fact, I find it pretty boring. The, those parties that you see people photographed at, you know, they're really, uh, they're really terribly boring. They're always sponsored by some vodka company you've never seen before, mm -hmm. and there's always about a thousand people who have credentials to be there but are really sleazy looking and sounding. And then there's like three people who are famous, and they get their picture taken, and then they get right back in their car and go home. <laughs> you know, it, I, I don't understand what's so fun about it, but people hang out in that scene a lot. But uh, I have two kids, you know, and I write. See, I, I think I'm a little different because I write and produce, so that puts me on the other side of the camera too, which gives me perspective. And do you like see things differently with like a Midwest angle? Uh, uh, definitely. Most definitely. I mean, 10 Items or Less, the show that I do, is all about, if you watch that show, in fact, the cast always makes fun of me because they're like, this show feels like it's set in the 70s. And I'm like, that's because I was in Kansas in the 70s. You know, it, it's very much based on, ten, the store that set, uh, that 10 Items is set in is based on an IGA store that was in El Dorado, Kansas, where my uh, family is from originally. Um, and a lot of the Look, I just wanted to do a show that appeals to people who don't necessarily live in New York and L.A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to do a comedy that basically the country would be interested in, in seeing and having characters from the Midwest without making fun of them, you know? Yes, the characters are goofy and ridiculous, but they're not goofy and ridiculous because they're from the Midwest. They just happen to be goofy and ridiculous.